Hello everyone, welcome to our preview of the Michigan Notre Dame game. I'm Pete Bigelow here with my colleague Michael Rothstein from Ann Arbor.com. Uh, Mike and I were just talking about the, the key matchup this weekend and we're both in agreement that the Michigan secondary versus the Notre Dame uh, receiving core is going to really hold the uh, key to this game. Mike, what are your thoughts on Notre Dame's uh, offense? This is a much different team than Connecticut. I think everybody knows that. It really starts, it, not with the quarterback, Dan Chris, we'll get to him later, but with wide receiver Michael Floyd. Floyd killed Michigan last year. Go watch the film if you don't remember. When he was healthy, he was the biggest key to why Notre Dame was in that game. He is taller, he is faster, and he is better than any cornerback Michigan has. And he will be the best wide receiver they face all year. And then beyond worrying about him, you have Kyle Rudolph, who's maybe the best tight end in the country. Remember Iowa's Tony Malecki and what he did to Michigan last year. He killed them on the seam route. Expect more of that out of Rudolph, I would think, because he's got that type of skill. And they have a whole bunch of complimentary pieces that can run the ball and catch the ball, led by Armando Allen, out of that package, out of those guys. Guys like TJ Jones, who's a freshman, Duval Kamara, who's a senior, John Goodman. And guess what? They were all rated four and five stars by rivals and scouts. So they have a ton of talent. And who's throwing the ball? Dane Christ. Dane Christ is, prob is better than Jimmy Clausen with his legs, which maybe fits better in Brian Kelly's offense than Clausen would have. And he's got a pretty strong arm, too. And oh, yeah, he was a five star, too. So, Pete, how do they? stop these guys? Uh, that's a good question, Mike. The secondary at Michigan took another uh, hit this week when backup safety Vlad Emelian decided to leave the team and transfer. So as, as thin as they were going into the Connecticut game minus Troy Wolfolk and Justin Turner, uh, Michigan's secondary is even thinner. Uh, I, I don't know. I think they're going to have to come up with a pretty good defensive plan to, to contend with Michael Floyd because I think even when the tough thing with Michael Floyd is when they have him covered, uh, he can still go up and get the ball. He's going to be a real tough guy to stop. I agree with you there. Um, I think Michigan's going to have to play a lot of a lot of nickel packages, maybe just to to kind of take take away the receiving threat and give up a little bit in the run game there. Uh, that's how I see the game breaking down. I, I think that's going to be the key matchup. Uh, what's your prediction on the final score? Pete, I'm not really sold on either team's defense. We already covered Michigan's defense. Notre Dame's defense struggled to tackle. I think it's going to be a very offensive game, but at the end of the day, I expect a little bit of Floyd on Floyd violence. Michael Floyd will probably have an advantage over JT Floyd, who more than likely will draw that assignment. And I think that that's the difference at the end. I think Notre Dame wins a close one, 34-31. What do you think, Pete? I don't know, Mike. I agree with you in a lot of aspects. I think it's going to be a high-scoring game. I think both defenses are very suspect. I like Michigan to continue the momentum they started against Connecticut and uh, pull out a close game. I'm going to go with the same score I went with last week, 33-30 Michigan on the road in South Bend.